Well, the truth is, I'm a big fan of this class, and I believe it's going to help you a lot in terms of getting along in life, not just at the poker table. Poker is a game that uh, it, it's fun in its own right, but it, but it teaches you a lot of things. Um, you know, you learn about yourself, you learn about other people, you learn about emotional control, you learn about sort of, you know, sort of negotiation, you, you learn about, um, I mean, the, the fundamental thing that you do at, at a poker table is, is you learn how to make difficult decisions under conditions of uncertainty. And those are things that you will be doing for your entire life. You will. <laughs> I got to tell the class this when uh, Paul and I were working uh, and I was asking him a whole bunch of questions for the book. He fell asleep on me. It's just like you guys in class. Really? <laughs> I don't remember this. <laughs> but I think we have a few people in here who might actually think they'd like to make a career playing poker. What kind of advice would you give to those people who are serious about making this a, a career for themselves? I, 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 I guess what I'd be most concerned about is just that, you know, to make sure that they do it in an incremental way uh, because it's so easy to get ahead of yourself and it's so easy to be, you know, all of us, I think, are su subject to being a little bit delusional about our actual abilities and, and uh, poker can straighten you out really fast. And so I would just say, you know, in terms of bankroll management, you know, take it one step at a time and, you know, uh, just not to rush it. Because I, I think that's the danger is that people can blow out their bankrolls and, and really risk their entire career because, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, they took too many chances or they, you know, they, they played above where they should play. Hi, Mr. Gordon. My name's Dan. I'm curious, do you have like a favorite hand that you always play or is it, do you, do you stick strictly to like math? Uh, my favorite besides hand is a, any hand Besides that, aces. Yeah, my favorite hand is any hand that I'm playing against Charlie. Hey, hey, hey. No, no I think that uh, I, I really don't. I mean, I, I try to just play the situation and the player and not really worry about the cards. I can play seven deuce or I can play pocket aces the same way. You know, it, it just really depends on the situation, the timing, you know, who I'm up against. What kind of things... Do the greatest poker players in the world take into account that good poker players don't take into account before they make a decision? Well, I, I think the biggest difference between the great players and the good players is the great players have what we call like a sixth sense, so to speak. In other words, they're able to put their opponent on a hand better than the average guy. And to me, the number one skill in poker is being able to put your opponent on a hand. Now, what that means is is that basically who can guess and figure out what their opponent's cards are better than the other guy. My wife's dog looked around for you for about a week at the cabin, couldn't find you. <laughs> <laughs> Did she end up making you that uh, chicken and rice dish? She hasn't. By the way, I, I've got to tell you guys, uh, he makes great chicken and rice. I mean, just he's not a good cook, he's a great cook. I've never cooked a meal in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but Paul is just an excellent, excellent cook. Thanks, Joe. Paul, what other things do you use uh, to keep balance? We've got friends. I know you work out. What other types of things do you do uh, to make sure you don't get just hooked into playing poker all the time? Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest concern is that you become, we call it degen, but just a degenerate, you know, like... Um, a lot, a lot of poker players lead very unhealthy lifestyles, and it just, it's not, it's not good. Um, but some of the things that I like to do is um, actually just this morning I was meditating. Uh, I meditate every morning. Um, I do yoga, uh, workout, and then I'm on a bunch of um, club team, you know, like intramural teams. Like last night we had a, a volleyball match, and then we, all, I'm also in a bowling league and three softball leagues. So basically just keeping yourself active so that, you know, like I said, like inevitably if you choose to do this as a profession or any profession, like things are going to get stressful and there's going to be downswings for sure. And when those happen, it's much easier to cope with if you have other stuff going on. 
um, where you can kind of just let let poker fade away for a little bit, and then you can come back refreshed and ready to play. Uh, one of the classes I've taught in the past is statistics, and I was looking at the evaluation one day, and this kid put down, uh, if I just had one day to li live, I'd love to be in Swain's class. And I thought that was pretty nice until I read the li next line, which said, because it would seem like a week. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line. Well, I definitely think there's a strong correlation to the business world and the poker world. And I say it all the time, if you approach poker by thinking of it as running a business, you're going to do much better in poker than the average guy would do. In other words, in the business world, you're constantly gathering information, you're making decisions, you invest your money, you hope to get a return on your investment. Well, playing poker is exactly the same thing. In the poker world, you're always gathering information, you're making decisions, you invest your money, you hope to get a return on your investment. It's just that simple. Hi, this is Charlie Swain. I've created a course that can help you become a great leader. I'm not going to say much, but let me just click through the concept of this course. little comment here as you guys are going through the university you have different departments but that's not the way life is and this is the whole course itself first we learn about yourself your competitors stakeholders uncontrollables and the game itself that you'll be playing let me stop for a second right here yes we're going to interview great CEOs, teachers, and leaders. But why poker players? This is not a poker course, but I have found the great poker players think in an entirely different way than the good players. That's why we learn how great poker players think. And that type of thinking is directly transferable to you to help you become a great manager, a great leader. We focus on how to think, not what to think. If you want to take a look at the full course content, go to YouTube and type in strategic thinking content, all one word. Here are the directions on how to enroll. I'll just leave these up for a few seconds because you've got to follow all these great directions. Guys, I guarantee you this will be a course that can change your life for the better.